Hello, my name is Lowell, pronouns he, him, and this is our third mission for Star Trek Adventures. And we are taking up sort of in the aftermath of the events of last time. Uh, Captain Carlton uh, is still off. I'll, I'll kind of give a, a little note about to where he's at. You will have a, a guest captain for some stunt casting kind of uh, things. Uh, uh, but I'll talk about what that means in a bit. We are uh, introducing... Overlooked again. Overlooked again, exactly. Uh, uh, we will be bringing in uh, uh, our science officer. Uh, Pavel has, has graciously uh, uh, stepped in to fill our fourth chair for today and introducing uh, that particular character. Uh, uh, so if I could start with, I think, uh, Latal just give us the the quick one minute elevator pitch on who you are again uh and and where your mind is right now um dissatisfied tellerite engineering officer chief engineer i would have you know um quite deserved took a long time coming uh people say i have a chip on my shoulder i don't i have been badly done by but the court-martial of someone who betrayed me is sweet. Excellent. Uh, and then uh, uh, Ensign Ward. Um, <clears throat> Ensign Ward is our young Ensign uh, at helm. Um, I think a, a gifted, if a little bit out of her depth for the last while, given her uh, field promotion to first officer um and um maybe with a bit of a, a pep in her step coming back aboard after a court martial i mean not for betraying me but you know for betraying starfleet you know uh, and the federation that that seems more than reasonable uh and then lieutenant vate uh yeah Lieutenant Vate is sorry. This is just the introduction, right, to our characters. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Vate is uh, the security officer slash uh, embedded Starfleet intelligence agent on the ship on the Kintsugi, yeah. and um, yeah, he encountered uh, a lot of uh, strangeness, including, and he's wondering where a particular psychic um, criminal is off. Uh, I think a psychic assassin was perhaps what she was. I think originally, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a what was she called Zenvost? Yeah, uh, is out there. Excellent. Uh, and so let's bring in our new character, uh, Pavel. Please tell us about who you'll be playing. Uh, I'll be playing uh, Torias Sulil. Uh, Torias is a, a thrill. However, he was uh, not. Uh, chosen selected to be to be joined by the symbiote so he's uh, from those group that did not receive a symbiote however he then went and joined the 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 starfleet and continue on his pursuit over the science uh, career uh, have I... uh he grew up on on the thrill uh, homeworld he joined, uh, uh, he was uh, in a science school, then in the uh, science course, I think it was called, in the uh, in the academy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, he was for, so, for some time on, so, on some faraway assignment so that uh, him and his ship were, were not destroyed by at the Battle of the Wolf 359. Uh, just probably like recently returned, unless you tell me otherwise. Mm -hmm. And now uh, being reassigned to fill all of the all of the gaps wherever uh, possible. Uh, I'm not sure about my ranks. I'm not sure what to rank. I think I'm going to put you at, at lieutenant. That makes sense, okay. given your experience. Okay. Uh, is the do, do, would, would people refer to me as a lieutenant or or or, or as, an, as an as an so as science officer? Like how would I it think work? either way, uh, science officers okay. uh, Sulil or Lieutenant Sulil. I think either awesome. would be appropriate. I think awesome. probably 
that they don't have right now, like a chief science officer. It's only a car crew complement of about 300. Uh, so I think there are a couple of people who are kind of acting as chief science officer, including yourself. Okay. Uh, he is uh, he's known. I'm not sure if it's yet taught in the in the academy books, but he but he's the one who invented. Let's give it a name. Torias Torias Meteor Maneuver. Uh, in the in the battle where where him and his ship on this far far away assignment have to battle some Cardassians raiders, they used a, a a meteor to hide in its shadow and ambush the unsuspecting enemies from behind. So that's his uh, new addition to the books of the tactics. So some some experience in battle, uh, uh fought in the the the, uh, the wars against. Do you think against the the Cardassians or against sort of after the treaty was signed, uh, like raiders? Uh, I think uh, I think the raiders after the treaty probably. Okay, all right. Uh, and uh, tell us about that other uh, career event you have the the artifact thing. Yes, uh, I found a cool name planet Monarch Four. Uh, we have encountered an unknown and malfunctioning terraforming device. It was basically destroying the planet that it terraformed, and it was uh, so it had to be like re-engineered how it works, and it was like unknown to us, uh, to us uh, technology. And uh, and the big question that is still as of yet left unanswered is, uh, uh, we haven't like encountered much of this technology yet, but uh, some some of the tricorder readings and sensor readouts can uh, can. Uh, uh, suggest that maybe more planets were terraformed by the and what and the fate of the terraforming devices is like they vanished did they like set the truck they hide under the earth for long enough but yes so it's uh i think that's fitting i'm not sure yeah. if it's fitting for the setting uh absolutely now do you think these devices are like of a recent creation or are these like ancient devices uh, or is it uncertain? Uh, I think that I think that the, the process of term. Oh yeah, uh, recent can be like even a thousand years in in this history. Yes. Yeah. Uh, remind me, the Alpha Quadrant is the one that is well explored, or the one that is not well explored? It's the one that is well ex explored. So Delta is, not, is the one that is not like that's not the one that is far away. Okay, uh, so I think uh, I think it was it was surprising to find this the this this device which remained like uh, hidden for so many years. So yeah, this is like ancient stuff. Okay, and it was only discovered because it was malfunctioning and it was like re re returning the planet terraform to its basic state, like a, a space like a, rock, like like a, a, a space terraforming rock. reset. Yes. Okay, I like that. Uh, so we're going to, uh, come in. Uh, I think that we're going to, as the, the episode opens, uh, we will see, uh, uh, both the Kintsugi, uh, as well as a galaxy class starship, uh, the Syracuse, uh, in orbit, uh, over a kind of lush green planet and, uh, I think that we will kind of hear that judge's bell just to signal like like court is uh, over. Uh, and I think we will see from the crew of the Kintsugi, uh, Ward, Vate, and Latal in their full, like the long coat dress uniforms uh, coming back uh, from that and heading to the uh, a transporter room uh, and I think that that uh, there are people looking at you because this is clearly an unusual uh, thing you know they've heard rumors about it so the crew of the Syracuse are kind of like wonder what's going on uh, and I do think that as that is happening we are getting that personal log voiceover from fate uh. 
Starfleet Intelligence Agent Gamma 23, uh, Lieutenant Drenovate reporting mission log. Captain Haskell's attempt to protect his own career not only jeopardized the Kintsugi and the imprisoned officer he wished to silence, but the fragile peace between the Federation and the Romulan Star Empire. It's hard for many in Starfleet to believe that a senior officer would put themselves above anyone's life, let alone one of their subordinates. But the truth is that there are forces and agents within the Federation as much as you see in the Klingons, the Cardassians, or any other civilization. With the unexpected help of Prisoner 729, we were able to prevent the captain from sabotaging the handover in Fensiren, and we exchanged one very reasonable Romulan spy for one Starfleet officer. With this court-martial, we've sent Captain Haskell away, and we've removed his influence in Starfleet. But I have to wonder, what about the Romulan spies still among us, The people, their, their backup plans? How far do they go into the Federation? I'll be keeping an eye out. I'll be keeping an eye out for the escaped prisoner, Zenvost, as well. And uh, I think we'll see the, the group uh, beam on to uh, the, the starship, and uh, we'll see Latal heading up to the bridge. And uh, when you get uh, up to the, the bridge, Latal, it's kind of like, okay, this is my time. Uh, uh, I think uh, when you get there, doors will, will come open and you'll step down and you will see everyone in the bridge is kind of like a little tense. Uh, and you can see that there is someone uh, seated in the captain's chair. Uh, and clearly not your Captain uh, Carlton, uh, Commander. Uh, I, of course, I'm in full dress. Yes. Uh, because there was nothing keeping me away from that bridge, not even a change into my day uniform. Um, and I will look at who else might be here. Um, I think I'll look to Ensign Adira Lee, who is uh, manning the tactical station. And and I, I, I kind of... And and she will say, Captain on bridge. And uh, you will see the figure uh, uh, stand up uh, from the, the captain's chair and turn around. And you will see uh, a Denobulan there. Uh, with the requisite With pips. the requisite pips. Um, uh, uh, Captain? Uh... Not as of this moment, uh, uh, Captain. Uh, uh, as it were, I, I, I'm sorry. I I came up from the the colony uh, uh, with my new orders, uh, but as I understand it, you and your compatriots were in the midst of the legal proceedings. Yes, um, we had not been informed of this. Um, why don't Can we I suggest step, we retire to the ready room? Step into your ready room. Let us do that. Um, and there has to be some kind of reading in process. As, exactly. As per There's a, a formal century. handover. Yeah. Um, where uh, he hands me his orders and I read the orders back and I say, um, uh, Captain Zinette, you are read in, sir. Uh, this is... Uh... I apologize for the uh, hastiness of this. Uh, my own ship, the Bellerophon, uh, suffered uh, damage and is at in dry dock right now, uh, being repaired. Uh, and I had taken the opportunity to go home to uh, my home world. Uh, and they said that they needed someone to fill in, given what had occurred. I said I did not think that was a good idea, uh, given the situation that you and your compatriots had just gone through. Uh, but they were insistent that they wanted a third party for the window of time before your captain returns. Uh, and and has, uh, am I to understand that he still has plans to return? Permission to speak freely. Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to give you permission to speak freely, Captain. I, I, I am, I am saying, uh, may we speak informally? Of course. 
given what happened with Haskell, uh, given his friends in Starfleet and so on, uh, it was necessary that your captain and first officer return back to Starfleet HQ to dot the I's and cross the T's on this. Uh, it's my understanding that this is one of those things where they have to do this and they will be back with you in just a few weeks. The plan is for us to rendezvous at Starbase 21 in three weeks, at which point I will return command uh, to Captain Carlton. I see. And in the absence of both the captain and his executive officer... Well, obviously you are the person most suited to take the number one position, if you would. Um, uh, that's very flattering, Captain. Uh, no, it, it, am... you've twice been, been bumped on this, and I. it is not the situation that I would wish for us to meet uh, the circumstances for us to, to work under. Um, I'm sure that we're both professional enough to get past that, Captain. I'm here for a few weeks. I have to rely on you. And I hope that we can make the best of this situation. And that if there's anything you require, the thing you need me to do, you have merely to say. I would suggest that you address the crew. As you will. Thank you. And uh, yes. If if you don't mind, I'll go and get changed. Absolutely. Uh, but then please uh, back to the bridge, unless you have matters in engineering that you need to look into. Uh, my team are not wonderful, but they are competent. I, I appreciate competency. Competency runs in my large family. <laughs> uh, and I do think that that we get that that voiceover of of captains in it uh, uh, announcing himself. It's stunt casting because it's in it's from the parallel uh a uh, star trek show uh uh star trek bellerophon uh so that's the like the, the 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 casting that we have for that uh and then we would go to credits you know we do the fade out and we would go to, to credits there and i want to do kind of a once around to like get a scene of life on board the ship where x number of days later the 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 ship is in transit. What are the kinds of things you do as, as standard duty? Or what do we see as decompression after this very, very tense incident? Uh, let's actually start with uh, Ward. Ward, what do we see on screen for your moment here? Um, I think I am... We see Ward um, mucking it out um, in the engines uh, with some of um, Latal's competent, but not wonderful, <laughs> engineering staff. Um, I think given the rough ride we had um, a few days ago, um, your Ward has some ideas about what how we could improve. And maybe this is based on the kind of close coordination she'd had with Latal uh, on that for that extra bump of power. So yeah, um, getting her hands dirty. And I think there'll be a bit when you come down out of one of those Jeffrey's tubes uh, and uh, you will see that uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Tatasa is there uh, and she has a pad in her hand uh, and you can tell she's been waiting to 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 talk with you, uh, uh, Ensign Ward. Uh, Lieutenant, um, everything all right? It, it is. May, may I may I have a word with you in private? Uh, sure. Um, back in the Jeffries tube, or you know. Oh no, no! I think we could just <laughs> step over here. There's no need to, to climb up there. Uh, sure thing. And, and she'll walk with you and she'll say, I, I, I wanted to say, I appreciate all of you, uh, everyone who spoke for me at the proceedings. And uh, 
I appreciate all of you being willing to allow me to transfer on to the Kintsugi. Uh, uh, it's been an education working here uh, uh, in engineering. But permission to speak freely? Uh, from a lowly ensign. You know, I, I, I've i lost a few picks here. I, I, I know, I know, but you're the only one I think I can talk to about this. Sure, permission granted. I don't think Commander the Tall likes me. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, no, no one does. No one uh, likes me? No, uh, sorry. No one thinks Commander Latal likes them. So, so it's not just me. It's definitely not just you. I just, I, I, I'm just worried about it. I, I, I don't think he like. I like. He's so angry at us down here sometimes. <laughs> I, I'm not really not used to that. Um. Well, let me put it this way. Um, it's my observation that when Latal is is attempting to be pleasant and polite, then you should be really afraid. Oh. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, uh, I'll keep that in mind. I appreciate you taking the time to, to speak with me. Okay. No problem. I was finished here anyway. So. And, and, uh, she will, will head, head off. Uh, Let's cut to Lieutenant Veit. What do we see like that tells us about your daily routine or or the work that you do or your relaxation? Where, where do we see you? What's that scene for you? Um, it is a Klingon battle arena uh, and they're all chanting for blood. Uh, and in the middle of it, there is a, uh, a battered looking Veit, you know, looking as like he's just escaped from the slave pens, uh, holding a bat left. Um, and they call out in Klingon, you know, uh, today is a good day to die. Bring out the champion. Let them fight for their freedom. And as the, uh, you know, the, the the drawbridge like levels, flashes down into the arena and the gates begin to rise, stepping out of it um, comes uh, Ensign Farga, uh, dressed in Klingon battle wear, holding her own bat left. And she screams <laughs> out in uh, Klingon, you know, <laughs> to, to, you know, like uh, to the death. And then sitting up in the Emperor's throne is uh, Ensign Tavillic, who leans forward with a goblet of uh, Klingon ale, uh, and he goes, thumbs down, uh, and then the fight begins. <laughs> you know, <laughs> excellent. I think we get get uh, 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 a bit of a bit of that before, of course. You know, just as the the final blow is about to be struck, Lieutenant Vate to uh, deck three. Yeah, everybody freezes. The Klingons freeze in minute like uh, thing. The wild animal that broke free in the background is no longer stampeding through it. It's all stuff. Well, that's me. Uh, the Vilic, you want to jump in here? I'm good. Okay. Well, uh, I wink at uh, Fargo, pick her up from the ground uh, and say like, uh, you know, I guess you'll have to amuse yourself. Uh, holodeck archway <laughs> we'll see that appear before you you head out of course we do get a shot of you walking in that costume through the hall uh because yes. they always do that yeah lieutenant sulil uh so we haven't really seen the science uh any of the labs or anything like that uh so like where do we see you are you are you working at a lab are you down like in a, a, a like a, a transport bay are you somewhere else like what do we see you doing that like tells us that you are a serious scientist uh, so there was no no scenes yet in the science department of, of the ship yes yeah we haven't described it at all yeah uh yeah i think uh i think as we come for the for the uh, so first of all i would like to ask because the suggestion was that I should have one value connected to another character. So I would like to ask who would like, I don't know, to have some kind of connection with me so that. That's a good question. Anybody want to throw that out? Um, do we serve together on a different ship? I think. Uh, or... 
I like that. Maybe you were on the ship when uh, Sulil did that that asteroid uh, tractor beam maneuver. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think that saved uh, me and my search and rescue team uh, in the Cardassian border war uh, entirely. Yeah, I like that. Uh, awesome. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Veit, uh, I will think about the value, but yeah, I I think I think we come to the uh like room that is in complete chaos and disarray, as uh, Lieutenant Sulil is trying to organize <coughs> the few people because you did mention that there are some people working in the science department, but he's like probably we are like assigning this room to be the science department. So people, so we see in the background some people carrying in equipment in, taking some some junk out. Uh, and uh, and Solil is trying to like assemble his uh, his his desk, his workspace, uh, and then uh, uh, and then he turns to uh, to face uh, Vade. Uh, I forgot if we are on the person. Uh, so uh, so yeah, he says, uh, "Oh, Lieutenant, uh, so nice that 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 you finally found some time for to for 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 us to meet. It was quite some time." Since, since, since we last seen each other. Bait, are you still in your Klingon costume or have you turned into your regular outfit when we see you arrive uh, here? It's much more fun to still be in the Klingon costume, right? Uh, you know, maybe like uh, still with a bit of green blood <laughs> like uh, on one hand and I'm like, you know, yeah, sometimes I've been busy. How, how do you get hollow blood off you? I mean, I thought it would just come off when we went out of the thing, but I guess something else. Oh, that's me. Oh, let me help you peel with this, and I will probably like get something to take this to 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 to, to take it out. Uh, wow, the ship has a functioning codec. Haven't been there yet. Wow, that's the the last one uh, was like beyond fixing. Uh, so imagine a couple yeah, of, well, uh, of, of rounds. Yeah, but this one's quite small. Uh, you got to scope things down, you know. Um, I think it's got maybe a maximum occupancy of uh, five, maybe. You know, not no getting the whole crew on there like they do on the Enterprise. No, one day we have to like replay this the the sequence with the with the maneuver. I I said I always need to be on top because people sometimes come in and, and ask me for the details that I don't remember. So we have to like replay it for us for, for me to always remember all the all details. But that's for the later date. I mean, it looks like you use a Taurus Meteor strategy in here. Uh, trip through as he looks around at the disarray of the science room and all of the I'm imagining like lots of data pads and stuff like stacked up in different corners like it's a complete you know whirlwind of uh, activity it's the equivalent of a room filled with post-it notes in Star Trek right mm -hmm. like yes yes exactly and uh that, yeah there is probably in some prominent space that is that that, that have been cleared to, it's, it's probably like the one award that Solil has Still, for this uh, discovery, it's probably like positioned there nicely, or award, yeah, award, uh, and uh, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lieutenant, can I uh, can I ask you something about the the recent events? Because uh, I'm a little bit blurry about all the things, and and I can feel that 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 the atmosphere is like. Really tense, but uh, I uh, I don't uh, I like the details. Well, it's never gonna. It doesn't go down. You know, it doesn't feel right whenever anyone in Starfleet uh, betrays another member of Starfleet, but particularly our commanding officers. But temporary Captain Haskell, he he was leading us on this mission to hand over the. Uh, a Romulan spy mm -hmm. to retrieve uh, his first captured first officer. But it turns out that the captured first officer knew more about uh, Captain Haskell's, let's say, activities than mm -hmm. he was coming up with. And so he wanted to keep her there on the planet. And he was willing to sabotage the entire prisoner handover and maybe risk war with the Romulans, all, to, all for his career. Uh, as he's as I'm staring at the um you know the commendation right the uh the thing so you know 
I put a hand on a silly old uh, shoulder and I say, uh, you know, don't go chasing uh, accolades too hard, silly old. Yeah, uh, well, hopefully, after we get this uh, science lab working, we can give the ship some positive light with, like, I don't know, making a discovery or other stuff so that we, so that the crew can forget about this uh, bad lot. You think you could find uh, a way to give uh, Lieutenant Commander Latala a sense of humor? Can you repeat, please? You think you, you could find a way to give uh, Lieutenant Commander, the first officer, a sense of humor? Uh you know, some things are uh, are beyond science. Nice. I, I think that is actually a good point to, to cut on. Uh, and I think we'll come to Latal. Latal, where do we see you? I'm in number one's office. Um, um, I've just added Warrant Officer Kamalo. Uh, to the NPC tab, if that's all right, because I think that Andara Commander was the command team's yeoman uh, providing admin services to uh, Captain and Number One. Um, and and I'm explaining very slowly to Kamalo um, why it is essential that we reorder the way in which files are kept for the command team. Because, frankly, I don't see the logic in the current arrangements. And, and I was explaining that this was the way that command, Captain Carlton, Commander Carlton, asked us to to manage the file system. Yes, and I'm sure that's because he doesn't realize it could be better done. I mean, he is, after all, a doctor. And we know how organized they can be. When he returns, I want him to return to a file system that makes sense. With your permission, may I add a, a notation that uh, this was your suggestion to the the system file? Well, I'd hope to give you credit for it, Kamala. Oh, no, please, if no. If you insist, no, no, that that that's all right. <clears throat> if you insist, that's fine by me. Was there anything else, uh, Commander? Um, I I I don't. I have to say, I've never met Captain Zinet. Um, I don't know what you can expect from him. Um, but. He seems very pleasant and nice. Yes, doesn't he? Um, time will tell. <laughs> Thank you, Warren Officer. And uh, she will will leave. What have you done to like make this your own office here for the few weeks that you have it? Yeah, um, I think that's a good point because I just about moved in when I moved out last time. And so I think that there is then a, that maybe the, before that, there's a scene of me carrying a box um, and the box has um, perhaps a, a plant in it. And there is sat on the corner of the desk, this rather um, poorly kept cactus. I, I like it. Uh, there will be that tweak at the, the, I can't do the calm sound. I wish I had like a little sound effects back, bank, uh, but we will hear that of uh, somebody, you know, at the door. Uh, come. And the doors will open. And to your surprise, uh, Captain Zinnett uh, comes in here. I, I stand up, Captain. Uh, no, 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 no sit, I... sit, sit, uh, uh, Commander. Please. Uh, and I gesture to the seat on the other side of the the desk and and he will sit down uh, comfortably uh and he will say i thought of calling you up to 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 my ready room but <laughs> since i'm just down the hall i thought why not just walk down to where you're at i uh, you mustn't worry about calling me at any time captain that after all is part of the reason that you have a first officer absolutely Absolutely, that makes perfect sense. I, I, I again want to emphasize that uh, I understand how problematic this situation can. Captain, feel. can I interrupt there for a moment? 
Uh, Certainly. You seem to think that there is some difficulty. Can I assure you that there is no difficulty? We both are star serving Star Trek officers. We serve at Star Trek's pleasure. Um, there is nothing to explain, nothing to be sorry for, nothing to be sorry about. Well, I grew up in a family where there were lots of us and lots of things went unsaid until the, the Sunday clearing dinners, that kind of thing. So uh, uh, forgive me my 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 penchant for, for those kinds of worries. But if you say so, I will not consider an issue going forward. Uh, you can trust me, Captain, that if an issue arises, you will know about it. That, have, again, is the function I, 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 of a first officer. I have no doubt of that. Now, uh, uh, we have received a distress call uh, that has been rooted to us since we're the closest ship in the sector. Uh, there apparently is a merchant explorer vessel by the name of Algoth that sent out a automated distress signal. Uh, which is worrisome. Uh, it means they weren't able to get to comms uh, that has a location for it. Uh, it's a system Kel, Kel U216. I'm, I'm putting it to your pad right now. Uh, I don't know why they were there. Uh, it's a fairly desolate system. Uh, uh, several bands of asteroids a gas giant and a couple of uh, ice planets at the margins. No, no livable space there. And um, it's not really close to any trade connections. Can I suggest, Captain, that the 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 crew, uh, the command crew would be um, would be used to you raising this with all of us. Um, can I suggest that uh, that we continue this conversation with them present absolutely if that's what you prefer i was hoping uh, to get your one-on-one -on -one advice but if if you think we should gather the command staff together then by all means let us do that um and i'll flip and uh command crew to uh the captain's ready room um ensign astrid ward please join I'm assuming that Le Le Lieutenant Sulil is our senior science officer for the moment. Absolutely. Um, I guess I fill ops and engineering and Vate is our senior tactical. 100%. Uh, so I think we will cut to uh, our round table. It's a little bit different from the meeting room of the Enterprise. We've got a, a, our round table with pictures, but no space going past. And... Uh, uh, Captain Zinnit is there. Uh, you will notice that he's apparently sent sent ahead and had uh, uh, like drinks and food replicated and has been provided and put on the the table uh, for everyone. Like some time has been spent like choosing out what you know what your favorite thing is from the replicator, uh, and uh, he will will sit down and he will sit he will lean over the table like leans forward and he goes. Your lieutenant, uh, Sil Sulil. Uh, yes, Captain. I don't think we've met. Uh, I'm Captain Zinnit, a temporary Captain Zinnit, acting Captain Zinnit. I suspect we we should call it. Uh, uh, so I'm very glad to 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 have you uh, aboard. I've worked with a number of uh, a Trill in the past, and they've always been exemplary in their service. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Captain. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. I, I'm not sure how long I'll be assigned to the ship. Uh, with the current uh, staffing issues, but uh, yeah, I hope for uh, I hope for the best. Yes, well, I, I I hope that 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 you have a, a long and distinguished service with the the Kentsugi. Uh, afterwards, let's talk. I, I'm I'm very curious about what research you're working on, what uh, what you're doing right now. Maybe we can chat. By the way, are you associated with that uh, combat maneuver? Yes, that was me. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, uh, at some point. We'll go down to the graveyard. Uh, maybe over drinks, you can tell me the, the the story of how that occurred. Very curious. I would love to. Uh, so, uh, Commander Latal, uh, may I proceed with the briefing? 
Uh, yes, if I could just explain uh, Ensign Ward's presence. Um, uh, while Captain Haskell was in charge, uh, Ensign Ward uh, acted as his number one. I thought it would be helpful training uh, for her to observe the command team at first hand. What, what an interesting line of thinking. Are you comfortable with that, Ensign Ward? Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, and I'm obviously about to say something like I thought I was in trouble, but you know, <laughs> I, I think better of it. Well, it's the best pilot on the ship, anyways, Captain. Anything that's going to take, if there's going to be any tricky flying coming up, better to give her an, an eyes up on things first. Uh, absolutely. I read the report of uh, your descent through the gravity well towards that uh, prison planet. Uh, that was some amazing flying you undertook there uh, in coordination, of course, with uh, uh, Lieutenant Commander Ward, or uh, sorry, uh, Latal. Absolutely. If, uh, if it hadn't been for our chief engineer, we would have, uh, the Kintsugi would have been part of the landscape. <laughs> I think we should get on with the agenda, Captain. As you wish. Uh, we've received an automated distress call from a merchant exploration ship called the Algoth. Uh, uh, it, it provides no further details other than a location, uh, which means that we're receiving a purely automated call. I am relieved that we are at least getting that out, which says that the ship in some way is intact, hopefully fully intact. Uh, it's a small merchant explorer crew of two dozen. Uh, from what I've read, they are what you might call speculative prospectors. Uh, and they have a record of infractions uh, against various Federation uh, rules and regulations. However, that uh, doesn't mean anything. We are headed there uh at warp seven right now they are in a system called kel u216 uh it's a desolate system uh several bands most of the inner planets have been struck by various solar flares from the unstable star uh and rendered into uh, uh various sized asteroid belts uh, the fifth planet is a gas giant, and then there are a few uh, ice planets on the furthest periphery. I don't know why they would be in that system, uh, except perhaps prospecting. Uh, it is a system that is generally registered as off-limits because of the navigational hazards. Uh we're approaching now, so I'd like the crew to run long-range scans, see if you can find out anything else about the Algoth, uh, and undertake normal procedures as we head in. Any questions? Do we know uh, who the Algoth, uh, well, who the Algoth people are? Are they Mixed. human? Mixed crew, from my understanding, uh, uh, the various registrations I've seen show a strong turnover of personnel. Uh, there is a Captain Sill, uh, 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 who appears to be human, and their first officer. Oh, oh, that that that's not good. Okay. Uh, the first officer is named Zinvak, and he's a Zinti. Um, my knowledge of can we have the absolutely? Uh, I think there'll be like a flash up on the screen of a mugshot of a big, fierce looking, horrible cat person. Uh, and I think we see like a person to scale, he's good, head and a half taller. Uh, I've just recognized the Kazinti from the spelling of the, the yes, uh, cool. Uh, 
I whistle at the uh, the thighs of the Kazinti um, and I say, well, luckily this is a rescue mission, right? Uh, uh, hopefully. The last time I had to deal with Kazinti, it took multiple stun shots from a phaser to put him down. Any questions? All right. Well, you have your uh, tasks. Uh, I'll leave you to it. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Commander Latal, you have the bridge. Uh, please uh, send me a signal when we arrive in system. Uh, thank you, Captain. Uh, Ensign Ward, would you take helm? Uh, Lieutenant Sulil, I'd like a broad scan of the system. Uh, Lieutenant Vay, can you make sure that uh, we are prepared for any potential difficulties? Yes, right. Uh so let's let's go through it. Let now we're going to be uh taking a, a look at the system. So uh Lieutenant Sulil, uh this is a case of you going and using the uh ship's sensors, uh uh, which you have technical expertise, so that's gonna give you a reroll. Uh have you played 2D20 before? Uh, yes, but it's more standard. I mean, it's standard it's attributes a, it, and skills. Yeah, yeah sure. it's the same thing. Variation. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this feels like insight or reason plus science, right? Yes, definitely more of a reason approach. Okay. So let's have your role reason plus science. Do you think you have any focuses that are applicable to doing this long range scan? Uh, focuses. I have focuses in uh, computers, which I'm using. I'm not sure if it if it if, if it isn't too broad computers, but it wasn't the list. So I uh, it uh, computers would be like if you're working like to to rebuild a computer or program okay. a computer or something like that. Okay. So in that case, uh, probably not yet. Okay. Uh, so then. Uh, da, 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 da. Wait, but also here. my role will apply to this generating extra momentum to ask question. Absolutely. Uh, so reason plus science gives us a 16 or less. Uh, and the difficulty standard one or something more? Uh, difficulty standard one. Uh, no, no resource to buy the dice. Let's see where it takes us. Okay. It's a 20, which is a very good or good result. And that's a fail, I think. A 17 and a, a 20. Uh, yeah. So that is uh, a fail. Uh, so uh, you let me take a look at your talent here. I can't remember if you still get a question, even on a fail or not. No. Uh, so tell me. But uh, but wait, I said we have some reroll. Oh, yeah, that's right. You have technical task. expertise. Do you want to reroll the complication? No. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to reroll the 17. Okay. The complication? Come on. It's a 12, so we have a success and a complication. Okay. Uh, so I think that uh, you get like like what what uh, what I'm gonna give you is the 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 like key things you're gonna pick up. Mm -hmm. uh, long range sensors will tell you a couple of things. One is that the that ship is definitely intact, but there's something going on, some scrambling or something. You think that there may be at least one other ship in system, but the the sensors are giving you weird phantasmal images, so you're not certain, but you're certain that the Algoth is intact, but there might be others. Uh, the other thing I think you can tell is there is a lot of damage to subspace in the area. Uh, you're lucky that that distress signal is getting out because like all of the subspace communication channels and all of that are severely damaged and that's very unusual. Uh, and, and I do think that that as you are uh, approaching, uh, the complication is that that already at this closing distance, uh, ships comms, ship to ship or ship to federation, go down. 
Advice uh, tactical? Uh, before uh, I hand over the spotlight, I would like to ask this extra question. Sure. From roll ability, I generate a momentum to spend it on uh, obtain information. I, I feel like we can. Uh, so uh, the question is, uh, what uh, as of yet unseen danger I also notice? There is definitely evidence of multiple weapons fire, like high energy weapons fire in system uh, that suggests some kind of like big battle or something. Uh, the, it's kind of in, generally inclusive, but but it, it looks looks kind of bad. Lieutenant Fate, you were asked a question. Uh, if someone if someone picked a fight here recently, then they might be they might still be around, Commander. I'd recommend moving forwards with shields up and keeping an eye out. Uh, if the subspace fields so damp the local subspace fields so damaged, I think we're gonna have to use one of the runabouts to to get aboard. Shields up. Take us in to close with the Algoth, Ensign. Uh, Ensign Ward, uh, this you can tell that this is rough space. You've already been warned that that there are some unusual uh, astrometric events there and uh, debris, and now you know that the subspace is damaged. Uh, so I think I want for you to kind of hit your target get in system without any damage to the ship, I think we're actually talking in difficulty too. Okay. Um, do, do we start with momentum? In, no, in you crew? do not. Okay, okay. <laughs> of course not. I start with threat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess I'm being, you know, uh, relatively cautious because we have no idea what's in there. So I am keeping our impulse counter relatively low, but you know, keep keep a hand on the throttle to uh, get us out of danger if something pops up. So, um, control maybe. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, so control con, I guess. And I don't think um, helm operations. Yep, that's, I guess it's that's, that's exactly what yeah. that's for. Okay. So, let me so 15 slash four. Uh, so 15 out of two. So uh, three, three successes. successes. So uh, you'll have a point of momentum that you can put in the pool. Uh, what do you think is like the, the real challenge that you overcome here in system as you as you come in with the subspace damage, with these asteroid fields? What, what do we think we see on screen? I think the the subspace um, interference is actually shielding some of those asteroids from our scanners, and um, we get very little warning, you know, when they're coming, when we're approaching them. So, um, I mean, it's not like a Star Wars asteroid. Oh, field, of course right? not. No, <laughs> but it's. Um, it's enough to keep you on your toes. So a bit of um, uh, a bit of evasive action at, at very short notice, you know, and uh, the the uh, inertial dampeners are going into overdrive, you know, to keep people um, in their seats comfortably. Uh, we think definitely see that shaking there. Um, uh, uh, Latal, what do we see of you here as this as you kind of coming in system, coming out of warp? You know, we've got the special effects budget. We spent the CG. We've got the the asteroids there. We see the flares on the uh, star in the distance. We see this gas giant. What color is the gas giant? Muted. Uh, blue and purple. Blue and purple. Kind of see that swirling around with the, the clouds there. Uh, what do we see of you in this? Um, I think you see um, a Tellerite who's thinking someone's called his bluff. Um, he's in the captain's chair um, and, and you can see he keeps looking over to ops and engineering thinking, you know, are they doing a good job over there? Um, 
Um, I'm I'm as confident as I can be in in Ward, Vate, and Sulil. But do they really know what they're doing over there? Uh, and then you know, flick the the intercom. Um, Captain Zinet, Captain Zinet to the bridge, please. Uh, I will be there momentarily. You have the con, Commander Latall. I think you need to see what's here, sir. On my way. Um, by which time I'm guessing we're at that point where we see um, uh, we see the ship kind of coming in close to the Oberth hanging there in space. Absolutely. And I think we see Zanette uh, uh, you know, come up onto the, the bridge uh, and we can see on screen, you know, the asteroids and then we can see the planet. I think we see the scans kind of like I pick up where the ship is and we see that kind of zoom in like the far visual zoom and we see that gas giant and we see a ship moving rapidly. We can tell by like the 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 atmospheric scorch coming off of it, uh, uh, and it's clearly moving in a very fast, faster than it ought to, orbit that is decaying around this gas giant, uh, and there's this flare that's coming up from it. And I think there's a moment there where the flare goes out, and you finally see what it is, and you will see this merchant prince ship, like there. And also a Federation ship and also a Romulan warbird all stuck together. Let's take our first break and then we will come back. So I think post commercial. We come back, we can see the, the people looking at the view screen. We can see the, the shot of the three ships sort of phased, fastened together uh, uh, with the flares of the atmospherics going on as it's in high velocity decaying orbit of this planet. Uh, Latal. Um, and I think it is that shot of Latal and captain and the captain standing you know in front of the view screen as though being closer to it you get uh, a better view somehow um and uh my concern captain is that whatever could did that puts us at us at risk um i am concerned about approaching any closer i'm wondering whether we could use the tractor beams to stabilize their orbit at least we need to get significantly closer to use the tractor beams, at all. But not too close. Uh, all engines stop. All engines stop, Benson. Yes, sir. Uh, before we get any closer, we need to assess the situation. Uh, so, Lil, can you tell us anything about what caused that or whether there's any whether anyone is still alive on that mess of course a thing on grapple was uh, theorized at, i i remember i read i read some papers about similar accidents let's uh, have so... you uh make a, a another roll for the scans here with that re-roll uh, I wonder what should I roll because it might be inside, not the reason this time. I don't know. It's up to you, however you feel I'm... you're doing it. I think difficulty is a two this time, though, because the subspace interference, uh, the, the damage, and the strangeness of the situation. Oh, this is so it's it's very hard for me to pick what is the most appropriate and what is and not what is strongest. Uh, th this, is, this is like fate accelerated. If you give me a, a a a an argument for why your strongest works, you're welcome to use it. You have to give me a few seconds to read this this tiny new descriptions. Yeah, definitely reason because it's a forming hypothesis. Okay. 
So reason plus and, science and recall facts. Uh, yes. Uh, um, Salil, are you thinking about some kind of subspace phase transformation? Um, as I offer my advice, uh, I assist with command uh, and offer a reroll. Okay. Uh, so uh, mechanically, first, uh, Salil, you're going to roll your 2d20. And yes. you're going to get up to two re-rolls because of Latal. And then Latal will roll his die. Difficulty is a two. Okay, so probably should I spend the momentum? That would give you three dice on a 16 or less. Uh, I will I will leave the momentum pool. However, I think that uh, maybe astrophysics applies to it. It seems like some... Something connected that with the astrophysics that that might be happening. Absolutely. To those ships. So that'll shape the kinds of questions that you can ask. Uh, I think that's absolutely fair. So in that case, it's a sixteen slash five for your roll. So roll two d twenty. So that's three successes already. Three. Uh, I think I would not be rerolling because it's uh, it's uh, so it's it's good. Makes sense not to. Yeah. Uh, a little, uh, you roll yours with a d20. Um, I think probably command and reason. So okay. a single dice, uh, looking at 12 and I don't think there's anything at play. Okay. Uh, hang on. Where have I gone? Command and reason. There we go. Uh, that's a 13 and a four. So the first die was a 13. Sorry, it's, yeah, I should have reduced the number of die. I thought it was 13. Uh, so, uh, and one, so one? No. no. Okay, but we're at three successes, Yes. which means we got our basic question, plus we've got another one potentially for momentum. So, Salil, based on astrophysics, based on your scan, what is it that you want to know? What's your first question? The... And how many questions do I get? Do I get one for succeeding? You get one, one for extra? succeeding, and then you, you can spend that momentum to get another one. Okay. Uh, plus, you get your bonus one, so you actually get three questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Feel free to consult with the rest of the crew, too, if you want. Uh, I think Latal specifically asked about um, life science, right, originally. Uh, are the people left alive on the ship? Uh, yep, yeah, let's yeah, ask but, about this one. But the astrophysics focus means it's going to be more about what caused this. Okay. Well, uh, I, I, let, let, this, that seems like a vital question to know, though. So I'll, I'll give you this first question, and the, then the other two will kind of like lean into the astrophysics side of things. You will be able to detect that there are life signs. The problem is with the communications and the subspace and all of that, you don't have numbers, you don't have species, uh, uh, you just know that there are people alive on that conglomeration of at least three ships. Mm -hmm. You have two more questions, potentially, one for free and one if you want to spend the momentum. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's ask because I'm fascinated by what uh, has caused it. It looks to you just like that is that something caused a detonation or a collapse of some kind to the subspace in this area. And there was some kind of echoing wave that went out and like folded together these three at least vessels. Uh, and you can see that they're not together they're actually phased together in places you can see where the ships have actually had that phase space they're solid outside of that i mean you can tell that by the friction that's going on but for some reason somehow th there's intersection points of of those three there uh, do you want to spend a momentum for another question uh, wait, I'm trying to think about the mechanics of this game. The character uh -huh. has value to negatively impact the task. 
I'm not sure. uh let's leave it for now okay. uh yes I think uh because this was like a techno bubble fanboy question sure. I think now the real question comes from the extra momentum like how do we untangle them <laughs> <laughs> or do you want us to invent it now i think that's a that's a fair thing to say <clears throat> so the problem is is that they are in that phase space and they're all moving kind of together in a direction there's clearly some some like weak electron force that's holding them together it may be possible to physically like with a shuttlecraft uh, uh, peel one off, or uh, as you suggested, it would be dangerous. You have to get dangerously close, but you might be able to peel one off with the tractor beam. The problem is, is that you don't know like who's in there, what's going on, and stuff. So physically, you can might be able to pull them apart, but you don't know enough about what's going on there to say that that isn't going to like kill people in there. We can pull one ship at a time from this conglomeration with a with the tractor beam. Yes. Oh, it's about to kill anyone left in the other ships. Too dangerous. We the only way that would work was would be if we could put a team aboard and set up a temporary force field to hold the atmosphere in place when we literally tear the tin cans apart or well, we could move all the survivors to one of the ships any which way captain it seems to me that we need to put a team aboard i i would caution against you being part of that away team understood uh commander Latal, uh assemble your team but i want further analysis before you go in on what what is going on there what the dangers are of that phase space uh, Lieutenant Sulil, uh, uh, this is more of a science question. I want you to, to go uh, and see what you can do about modeling. Like, what are going to be the dangers of, of those phase points once people get inside? Uh, we're also going to need uh, probably personal transporter packs, the, the signal enhancers. Uh, for the crew, I want those things arranged. Um, and and some more to, I need you to plot the course to get us as close as you can without danger. We're gonna to have to try and match their speed uh, to, to do this. Um, can I ask a silly question, sir? Yes. Is there any reason why we're risking everyone's life to save the ships instead of all the people aboard? This is first step is us to assess what's going on in there. We can't pick up individual life forms. So there's no way for us to transport people onto this vessel right now. Understood, sir. The people sure. are more important than the ships. If the... Uh... If there's any survivors left in the Warbird or the Starfleet vessel, then there's too many for any of our, sh for our shuttles to bring back in one go. That's why they're called shuttles, sir. This is... Well, I also, um, need, I also need an assessment on how long it is going to be before this orbit decays. I, go, I need to know our window. Uh, you so, have the bridge... Commander Latal, I need to go and report into Starfleet. Yes, Captain. Um, Salil, two questions then. Beep, beep, yes, beep, 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 beep. Proximity alarms go off. Tactical? Uh, Lieutenant Vate, there are multiple small bogies uh, incoming right now. Uh, they're like the size of missiles, maybe something else. They're definitely moving with a powered course and closing in on the ship. Ensign Ward, uh, evasion Contact, pattern Delta 5. All right. Eight, what are they? Delta 6 it is, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's start. Uh, let's start with Ward. Do the evasion. 
for the, from the, the the sort of the the ship issue, and then I want to come debate on tactical. Okay, uh, so Ward, I think this is a kind of emergency flying yeah. uh, to evade quick contact. You do have shields up, so sure. that is to your advantage. But they're fast, they're smalling, and they they small, and they came in kind of before your sensors could detect them. They're, they're clearly something dangerous and weaponized. Yeah. Uh, I imagine daring uh, is the best attribute in this situation. That does seem right. I'm going to spend a threat, and I'm going to roll test here. Uh, so I'll be rolling um, daring con, and I think evasive action might count. I have four successes. OK. Uh, let's spend some momentum pool, maybe. OK. And you definitely, your focus definitely applies. Uh, I rolled two ones and a 12. So, what? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so five successes against four successes. Uh, so you get one momentum back. Uh, and what do you want to spend that on? Do you want to, do you want to hold on to momentum or do you want to ask uh, a question? Uh I mean, I would like to know where these came from, right? So maybe, um, I mean, this is maybe just giving someone else at the security um, desk a, a good read on us. Uh, so you want to hand that momentum getting... over to Vate and have Vate yeah. take his action? Yeah, okay. if that makes Let's sense. Let's do that. Uh, so Vate, there's one one kind of uh, momentum handed off to you potentially. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you want to do? Um, I want to uh, bring up the ship's phases and uh, immediately begin, um, you know, trying to shoot them down, basically. Okay. Yeah. So let's do the, the the tactical attack on them. And then if you have any extra momentum, you've got one uh, right now. You can spend that for obtain information. Okay. Um, spend another threat. Since I got it, might as well spend it. I run two die. What's the difficulty? Uh, difficulty right now is a two. Mm. So I'm very unlikely to get with just two die, aren't I? Is it uh, possible for me to support from the uh, sensor station? Sure. How do you want to do that? Like, uh, what are you doing to assist? I think I'm uh, precisely pinpointing the boogies. Okay. Then you will roll one to like twenty. A look at things, you know. <laughs> like, get me a closer look at those things. Uh, let's have you roll one d twenty, Sulo, and then we'll come to Vate's roll. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what to roll. I'm, I mean, what? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, I think this is definitely right now for what you're doing. It's going to be con because you're operating the con. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I would say insider reason. Uh, uh, definitely not inside. I think. Uh, okay. Uh, so that's a uh, that's a twelve. Roll me d twenty. I mean, I will. I, I, I may be daring, reacting to new situations without hesitation. Sure, I like I that mean, too. So uh, let me change. Uh, daring con. Okay. One, One die. Twenty. No. Actually, I'm, I mean, no success. No success. Uh, 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 Lieutenant Vate. Uh, then can I give you more threat to add an extra die to my pool? You may absolutely do that. Okay. Great. <laughs> cool. I will roll, uh, I think, daring and con, because I think uh, on that screen, like, uh, you know, the, fl the sensor things are flickering in and out, and it's a quick. Now, technically, for firing the ship's phasers, it is daring plus security. Oh, is there an actual? Uh... Yeah. Okay, I thought it would be con just because I was. Uh, yeah, they do the security role. for any of the kind of like the combat roles. You've got okay. that free momentum I handed you too, right? Yeah. Although I think I can only use that to gain info, right? Oh, you can use it for anything. He just put oh, it okay. aside. So if you don't want to give me the threat, but if you want to hang on to that momentum to use. That'd be one of the, you know, you know, could have an extra effect, right? Anyways, let's go. Um, I don't think any of my focus is coming to play here. Okay. 
Uh, that is two successes and a failure and a complication. Okay. So, a complication. so two successes is enough to do the damage, but I also have a complication. So uh, you will hit these things uh, uh, as they come in. One of them hits the shields and there's a flash as it goes through the shields and hits the phaser bank and there will be an explosion uh, as uh, you've taken out most of them, but phaser banks are down right now uh, for at least the, the the near future. The shake of the ship as that happens. Do you have any momentum left? Did you... Momentum left. So. You have a question then, if you wish. Yes. Uh, I do think it's important for us to uh, know what's, where did these come from? What's sending these out? <laughs> It looks to you like there was in this area a cloud, like a minefield cloud, that activated uh, on your approach to the the system. And in fact, I think now that you scan, you'll see that there are that there are some debris of other minefield clouds that have been set off uh, uh, in the area. Um, and I think. Now that you've spotted them, you can also spot where there are a couple other active ones uh, around. But they're a very unusual weapon, uh, uh, and uh, like not something you normally use. I think uh, I yell out, you know, uh, their minds. Just as uh, they pen out one penetrates through the shield, the phaser bank goes. So the explosion rocks, and one of the ends on, on the on the bridge just yells. <laughs> Uh, phases down. <laughs> Back. Get that flash yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. Damage control to weapons control phases forward port. Do you want to roll the damage control roll? Yes, Commander please. Tall? Uh, I think this is on the hoop, so I think it's daring rather than control. Mm -hmm. So that's nine and engineering. Oh, I command actually from current position. Yeah. Uh, Twelve. Uh, does my engineering department apply here? One hundred percent. So that does that buy me another dice? So that reduces the difficulty from a two down to a one. Okay. So uh, a two dice that is daring and command. Uh, ah, that's disastrous. Seventeen and nineteen. We're working on it, but it's, it's going to be at least thirty minutes before we're going to be able to get phasers back up. <laughs> uh lieutenant Sulil, uh what is it that you want to do we're kind of like out of this combat situation you've avoided that the ship is kind of moving closer to the planet to 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 figure out where to go to get yourself uh uh you know in the right orbit what do you want to do what do you want to analyze in the meantime uh so uh I want to, so I think Salila will ask Commander, Commander, if you give me uh, 15 minutes, a quarter to a, I mean, 15 minutes to a, to a half an hour, I believe I can reconfigure Delta communication matrix to be able to communicate with the ships between uh, the, 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 despite the communication disruption that is happening over here. I, I did, I, I, I do have some experience with the subspace communication, so. I might be able to. Maybe we will be even able to to get that uh, the transporter or, or pinpoint them exactly. But this will take me like about uh, maybe like thirty minutes. Make it so. Spend this time. Okay. And yeah, I will go to the elevator, leave the leave the bridge, and I believe I have to go to forward array station. Yeah, forward sensor arrays. Okay. Yes. Uh. And and do this reconfiguration, which I mentioned, reconfigure delta communication matrix. Okay. Awesome. I, lo I love it. So uh this is an extended task that you're going mm -hmm. to undertake. Uh this uh, uh you're you're approaching this as an engineering task or a science task, do you think? What do you think is is going on here that you're trying to do? Are you trying to techno babble, change the frequency kind of thing, or are you trying to to Re rechange like physically the stuff like how are you framing this? Um, you get uh, David, you even get mucky. I guess is the question. <laughs> right. 
uh, uh, the, the, I'm I'm trying to to think. Wait, I have something for extended tasks. Yes, you do. You get you get an extra die for effect when you do it. Uh, I'm not yet sure what it means, but cool. Uh, I I think this task is uh, best would be engineering and science, but that's not optimal. I think it's a part of engineering because I do have to like physically reconfigure some device that sends and receives signals okay. to bypass. Absolutely. What is your engineering? My engineering is a free. Okay. So you'll head down to work on this. And uh, I think that you will be able to apply your technical expertise. You'll be able to get a reroll. Uh, question. Since this is an extended task, can I like roll once with this, once with this? Uh, well, we'll do the first task, see yeah. how far you get and and uh, work through. So uh, so the first thing you do is let's have you make that, that engineering role. Okay. Because I think that if it's an extended task, first comes inventing the science how to do it, and then comes applying it. So probably we'll do at least well, two of them. Yeah, I think probably probably we're looking at that kind of range for the for the time on this. So let's let's start. Yeah. So yeah. So first, it's like inventing how to do it, sure. and 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 drawing it this on the data let's, part. Yeah. Let's have you roll your science then. Uh, yeah, science with reason. Okay. Uh, reason, science. Uh, roll. Uh, cool. I get three successes. Three successes. Uh, so you will succeed. Uh, you have a point of momentum. Uh, yeah, I'm going to drop it a bit to the pool. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to roll your science is a five mm -hmm. uh, plus two dice. You're going to roll seven of those challenge dice, the, the roll CD at the bottom. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Two. So, so yeah. one. Two, three, four, five, six. So each one gives you one point mm -hmm. towards the success, but also those jokers also give you one point plus another one because of your ability. So yes. you got six points. So what that means is you got one breakthrough because mm -hmm. it takes five points to get a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And then you've got one point towards the next breakthrough. And when you get that awesome. second breakthrough, you'll have this done. So awesome. we'll get that montage. What? Tell me what this montage looks like. Like, are, are you are you at a computer panel? Are you underneath something? Are you scribbling stuff? Are you in a Jeffrey's tube? Where do we see you? I'm, I think I'm in the, this awesome name, Jeffrey's tube. Uh, I think I'm connected to a device and uh, and I have like a remote, I have like a panel that I carry it, will carry it with, with me over here. And I'm just like pressing buttons, having, seeing some graphs and, and then trying to adjust them to go in the proper wavelength. And I'm like preparing to now apply it to the machine. Perfect. So you're in the process of that. Uh, Ensign Ward, what do we see you doing during this this time? What are you? What task are you undertaking? What are you looking into? I mean, our um, as I recall it, it's get as close safely and close enough to this um, trio. Yeah, <laughs> we call it a trio of ships. Um, so yeah, I think uh, slowly, slowly, catchy monkey uh, is the name of the game. So uh, I think the difficulty right now is a two, sorry, three, but I do think that the ship's traits apply uh, here. Um, go back to the the, the ship. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, an organizational question, because you mentioned that I that I should add one to the pool. Do yep. we add, as the players, add to the, the momentum pool and edit the value over there, or someone yeah. is managing yeah. this? Uh, whoever, whoever gets the momentum, you go ahead and put it in there. Okay, so you said that my task was difficulty two. I generated three, so I'm adding one to the pool. Exceptional. Exceptional. Cool. Uh, uh, so uh, this is our our rebuilt and reborn. We're going to apply that trait here. I think like like uh, there's a little bit of your hodgepodge ship trying to help another hodgepodge ship. I think there's a resonance there. So difficulty two for this maneuver. Um, 
Okay, so control, I guess, if I'm being very careful about it. Yeah. Uh, con, I, yeah. I yeah. mean, Helm Operations seems yeah. to be a catch-all in this case. Uh, 15 slash 4. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, that's a 2, so 2 successes, and I got a 19. I don't know if the... the uh, so... What do we see? Like, like what's on screen for our special effects here as we see this weird conglomeration ship, you know, in the atmosphere such that we see that the the friction from it, uh, the purple and blue planet down below the storm of that and your ship coming in. Like, what does it look like for you? I think along the bottom of the ship, uh, or at least the atmosphere side of the ship, um, we see the the shields kind of interacting with the atmosphere, and we get this strange like aurora borealis effect just just spreading out, um, and and kind of like a, a forward wake as mm -hmm. we push towards um, uh, towards the trio. Nice. You'll get within tractor and transport range, uh, and you know you're matching their speed. You've got their their course calculated out, so you are are holding position there. Uh Latal. Well, while the sensors are getting realigned, while the ship is getting put into position, there's lots of things you don't know yet. What are you doing? Um, I think I'm not in the captain's chair. I think I'm at ops. Um balancing the power supply to boost the tractor beam. Uh and uh and or transporters if if Sulil can get us uh, enough comms to get a, a, a link, a, a, a transporter lock. So you um, want to be like getting the transporters set for this? Okay. Yes. Uh, I think that's difficulty one. The goal is to establish a trait uh, here uh, uh, to put on this essentially to, like, you know, transporter lock as a, as a trait. Uh, so I'm thinking reason and engineering with transporter operations in play. Perfect. Uh, so that would be 14 slash 4, I think. Yeah. Two dice. I'm going to burn that momentum to get a third dice. If you wish. So reason and engineering. Three dice. Roll. One five and nineteen, so, so the one counts. Yeah, so twice. you get three successes. So you've got two additional successes, uh, and I think you will be able to to get a transporter lock uh, there uh, uh, on which ship? Uh, the Federation ship. Okay, uh, and I think that you are. Close enough now that you can read that the ship uh, is a Walker class ship, uh, the Carthage. You've got mm. two momentum, which you can use to establish another trait, or you could spend it to get uh, information, or you could put it in the pool, or some combination of those can things. I, I mean, can I up the quality of the transporter lock to solid link? I think that... I, a, a trait is a trait, so I think transporter lock is is fine. Is it okay? Uh, in which case, I'll leave two in a momentum pool. That's that's my objective achieved. Okay, uh, Lieutenant Vate. Uh, maybe an an interesting option for Alan. Maybe maybe you want to 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 quickly find some information about the the recent mission of the ship, like what they might be doing here. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'd rather have two momentum in the pool for Just some critical activities. Thanks, okay. uh, Lieutenant Vate. What are you doing? Um, well, with with this sort of space damage here uh, and the interference. Um, we're going to need to get boots on the ship and a pattern enhancers in place, even with the improvements. So uh, I think Veit is uh, loading up the, the shuttle. Okay. Uh, I think um, wearing that, um, you know, Starfleet XO suit, uh, space suit, basically, with the little boots and the helmet uh, currently off, cinematically off, right, as uh, we load the ship. And I'd like to uh, have 
um, what's she called? Uh, Ensign Adira Lee, uh, assisting me in this uh, awards roommate, who was also a member of security. Absolutely. You're getting that loaded up with the the uh, uh, some some phasers and the pattern, so on. Got that that locked up there. Yeah, uh, and I'm telling the assembled extras, uh, you know, uh, we're going to need to be careful out there. You know, we don't know if there are any Rom what the status of the Romulan crew is, but, you know, uh, we're on a search and rescue mission, but be prepared for anything. Uh, and uh, is there anything mechanically that you're doing, like sensors for obtaining information or particular prep of something or what else? Uh, what would it be to sort of... Um... You know, to call upon my character's knowledge, perhaps an understanding of, uh, like, you know, Romulan um, activities in the area, or, uh, you know, like why this ship is here. What the um, what was the Carthage mission again? No, we didn't know what the Carthage. You don't mission know was. what the Carthage mission is. No, no. Well, I guess that kind of thing. Looking into um, the Carthage, yeah. uh, that... maybe looking at the Romulan, whatever signals I can get from the Romulans. As well. That feels like a, a kind of a, a going to the computer banks and and checking your comms. Uh, what, difficulty one. What do you want to roll it with? Um, I it's not my strongest suit, but I think this is definitely a reason roll. Okay. Um, however, I think it is a security roll still. Yeah. It is calling upon intelligence, uh, analyzing threatening situations, um, an in depth knowledge of weaponry, and I would imagine, like, you know, opponents, basically. Uh, Absolutely. So that is a, and I also have a focus in um, espionage. I think is of relevance here. So it seems perfect. Thirteen. So rarely have to change from daring and uh, security that I'm uh, more than I have to do it. Cool. It's difficulty one. You said I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just roll. That's two successes. Two successes. Mm -hmm. So, the first thing. Oh wait, did you have a? What's your security? uh five five so you have four successes oh wow okay cool so the first thing that you will find is that when you go to pull up the the carthage like like details mission parameters you hit a you know your security clearance is not high enough for that uh and in fact when you go to go to look the carthage is supposedly uh, at Utopia Planitia, uh, uh, like on on retrofit, that's kind of what what is listed in the thing. But uh, you'll hit that kind of blank of oh, okay, wait, you've got three momentum. Yes, I do have three momentum. Um, could I spend one of those momentum to uh, penetrate that clearance? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah uh, I think I, uh, I, you know, uh, computer uh, security clearance, uh, Agent Gamma 23. The Carthage is currently on a black ops mission testing. And then it's there's a blank there, like a redacted point weaponry. Uh, and you will get the sense that this ship is a Federation off the books, experimental, dangerous, illegal weapons testing ship. Uh, doesn't like the sound of this. Um, I'm going to spend my other momentum to uh, scan the Rom, you know, uh, bring up the records on the Romulan bird of prey. I think that you will get the sense that like we're kind of checking the details on this and, and what you know is you expect that somehow the Romulans got wind and this was a cloaked Romulan observational ship because it's not a heavily armed ship. It's definitely like a light, fast cruiser intended for scanning and intelligence work. And somehow they got caught up in some shit. You've got one momentum left. You can put it in the pool. 
or ask another I will, question? I will put it in the pool. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I will uh, come, uh, Latal. I've got some. Uh, I got some unwanted complications. You'll want to know about. Yeah. yeah. At which point, I guess we cut back to the bridge where we've just finished having those un those complicated, uh, you know, bits and pieces explained. Oh, I think um, I think because we did say that in, even internal comms were disrupted, right? Until we fix the solution, I think it's the did it it Latal, and then it's just cut to Latal with the. Uh, so what do you do, Latal? Like, do you go and tell Captain Zinnett? Do you keep quiet? Um, I, well, yes, I have to tell the captain. Our Starfleet protocols require me to keep the captain informed. I can't, this, 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 he is the captain after all. Um, uh, all although the captain, the captain may know already. Why is it that Starfleet cannot obey its own protocols? I prefer to believe that Captain Zinnett is what he appears to be, a fairly harmless denubulum. Um, so uh, at this point, until proven, that's proven differently, I don't intend to layer another one of your conspiracy theories on top of this, fate. Always the idealist, Latar. <laughs> I just, I, I, I uh, uh, <laughs> and? Um, and go to see Zinnett and say, um, this is very odd. Um, I've checked using uh, executive officer security clearance, and it, it, it does appear that the Carthage shouldn't be here, or at least if it should be here, it's off the books. How off the books are we talking? I think significantly off the books. I mean, the 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 the, the record suggests that it's it's here testing some sort of new weapons technology, but even the name of the weapons technology is redacted. Do you think that they caused this? I I think there's no way to know. We have no idea what technology they're testing. We don't know how that might interact with the the local um, kind of stellar situation. It we don't so his, little. Raises his finger. One second. Lieutenant Sulil? Uh, yes. You're oh, working you on the sensor arrays to try and bring up and get full comms restored? Yes, right? sir. I would like you to prioritize the sensors and the ship-to-ship -ship communications. I do not want you to repair or spend time on communications with Starfleet until we have this matter in hand. Do you understand me? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Prior prioritizing, of course. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Turns to you, you like... I do not want Starfleet Command to reach out to us and stop us from doing what we're doing. We need to rescue those people. Uh, you think it's sufficiently off the books that Starfleet Command would write this off? If they have gone to those lengths to hide this, I think that there is a significant chance that they would interfere with us. Do I have your confidence? Uh, you you have my confidence and great concern. We will We will deal with that matter when we are done. I think it makes sense, given our rescue priorities, to prioritize those communications and those sensor arrays, and I do not think that we are going off book at all. Do you? Uh, I think we are playing with what I believe they call on Earth a straight wicket. I don't know what that means, but we'll go with that. Uh, so let's cut back to Salil. Uh, now, what do we see you doing to, to get the, the, the sensors and the, the communications up. I think now we see him with this uh, weird looking large pen that is like very colored at the top and it's like changing colors. And he's like manipulating this around some color too that is also changing colors and and, and looking at the track order to get it like perfectly right. 
to yeah to get to to to, uh, to apply the yeah. theory to the uh, physics let's let's have you roll this with engineering this time yes so i think this is like a control because it's a uh, careful timing accuracy and so on absolutely so control with engineering okay and also subspace applies yes uh, uh, is it still difficulty two still difficulty two control engineering uh, hmm. Mm, yeah, let's. Uh, and you have a reroll. Yes. Uh, two fives gives me a straight success. Okay. Uh, so straight success. So roll me seven challenge dice. I think. Oh, what's your, what's your engineering? What's your engineering? My engineering is three. Three. So roll five challenge dice. One, two, three, four, five, and one from previous, I think it's a six again. Perfect. So you will get this set and I get the, you know, and can get sensors. And I think immediately you hear uh, uh, a voice come in on the comms uh, that uh, says to you, uh, uh, this is Captain Pin of the, the Algoth. This is Captain Pin of the Algoth. Uh, uh, reaching out, sensors are down, comms uh, are down. We're doing this on wide beam. Uh, there's we've had a catastrophic encounter. Uh, uh, anyone out there? Is there anyone out there? And I think that comes on to the to the bridge as SLL is coming up. Maybe a, a little bit of strategic grease mm -hmm. and uh, on your face to show that you've been at work. Of course, perfect. Uh, this is Lef Lieutenant Commander Han Letal of the USS um, Hitsugi. Um, oh, thank God. Uh, uh, something's gone wrong, terribly, terribly wrong. Uh, can you brief me on, on how you come to be in this situation, Captain? We were in system prospecting, as she says with a little hesitation there, uh, when we were struck by some kind of a uh, weapon that sent our ship off course. Uh, we saw uh, a Federation starship and steered towards that. Uh, and then something happened, uh, a, some kind of subspace rupture. And the next thing I know, uh, as far as I can tell, our ships are joined together. Uh, that Well, it's encouraging that your internal judgment matches what our senses are telling us. Are you well, in I'm, system? I'm, uh, we are in system, um, uh, but I, I I need to know, Captain, are, are other ships fused in a way that you can move from one to another? We've tried doing that, and yes, you can move through the phase space. Uh, uh, it's painful uh, to do it. Mechanically, cost one stress. Uh, uh, to to do, but uh, uh, we can't. But I've I've kept my crew here. I sent a party out uh, uh, a short time ago, and they have not come back and have not reported in. Uh, our sensors suggest that you are you are fused to both a Romulan warbird and the there's Federal... Romulans here. I was about to inquire, Captain, whether you had any evidence internally of a Romulan presence. I don't know what is going on here. Uh, uh, like, like the intersection of I mean, we saw a Fed ship, and there was clearly some other ship. I didn't realize it was a Romulan. I've never been on a Romulan ship. We can kind of see through at one point down uh, uh, in the cargo bay, uh, but I didn't see a Romulan ship before we got here. Right, sit tight, Captain. We will be, um, we will uh, doing uh, all the temperature our... is going up precipitously, sir. We don't have uh, any kind of like s external sensors, but I, I, I'm not liking the way the ship's feeling. No, and we are doing, we are working to correct. Uh, now, how much do I want to panic him? Uh, we are working to correct the critical decline in your orbit. Wait, there's somebody coming. Comms go down. Um, Let's take our second break, and then we'll continue on.
he left the recording on. <laughs> I, I, at least I didn't I, at the other night when I was playing Mountain Home. Mm. I I managed to forget when I came back from the break, and there was about thirty minutes of really good stuff that we lost. I was very very bummed afterwards. So let us then uh, take up with sort of that that sound of, of gunfire and the comms cutting out there uh, from the 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 ship. I put a picture of Captain Pin. You can get from her service record in the uh, uh, NPC tab there. More stunt casting. Uh, so uh, we kind of left off with that that uh, comms being done by uh, Lieutenant uh, Sulil. Uh, let's come back to uh, Ensign Ward and kind of do a one or once around. Uh, and then maybe kind of see about bringing people together. Uh, Ensign Ward, you've got this like set now, like got that parallel course, you're holding steady here. What else do you want to do? Any other preparations you want to make or things you want um, to investigate? Uh, or are you getting yourself the, ready to go over? Yeah. Am I the getaway driver or should I be piloting the shuttle for Vate? We wonder. It's up to you. Uh, I mean, it's always nice to to be in a work situation with your roommate, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, do we assume that you're you're down at uh, at the shuttlecraft? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's let's put a pin in you. Let's check in with the others. We we know that that you want to send a shuttle over with the the transport enhancer and and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, so what are you doing, Lieutenant Vate? Uh I think I'd like to be prepping the shuttle to go, you know, like okay. which with, my, with my team on board. Uh, well, my, expect my expectation is that we would send the best we have in the sense of search and rescue. So Vate, you will command the away team. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Vate even waited for an order to do so. I think he was already prepped and loaded. Um yeah. Uh, and Adira Lee is my backup, I think, here. Okay. Um, uh, again, I, Salil, uh, does anyone want to, you know, like the the, the joy of Star Trek is that I, anybody can go on the away team. Right? Zinnit will say to you, Latal, who are you sending from engineering? We need someone over to assess the spaceworthiness and such of that ship, of those ships. You are muted. I am. Uh, I have complete confidence in Ensign Ward's engineering ability. All right then. Um, it I think would be helpful, will... though, to have a science officer. <laughs> so, Lil, uh, uh, Captain Zinn will say, "So, Lil, uh, you finished up with the this boosting?" Uh, yes. Uh, yes, Captain. <sighs> Permission to go on the away team, please. Permission granted. Thank you. And we will assume that that the, we will see the shuttlecraft, uh, uh, the four of you, you know, load up onto that. Uh, you know, this, we hear that, uh, you know, klaxons as the the shuttle bay doors open, and almost immediately there's that that venting of, you know, because you're, you're pretty close to the to the atmosphere of the that kind of coming up and you kind of have to fly the shuttle out in a wreath of flame to, to get it over to the area. So, Ensign Ward, this is a flying exercise. It is difficulty four to get yourself exactly where you want to be. It is difficulty three for me to put you where I want. And it is difficulty two for me to put you where I want, but there's some damage to the shuttle. Okay. Does that Gosh. sound like a fine floating scale? That that sounds um, cromulent, very cromulent. 
<laughs> yeah, I will spend a point of threat to, to make that. So I already spent, by the way, two points of threat for the uh, gunfight happening on the, the merchant ship. Uh, so this, um, a wreath of flame sounds like it deserves a daring roll. I like it. Uh, uh, and I guess calm is yeah. the uh, discipline that keeps on giving today. Might uh, I assist with this task? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think just by sitting in the copilot chair, I go, I go and open the the engine console, and I slightly manipulate them to to, to take them slightly above the normal operation procedures, but just to give the 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 extra boost. Absolutely. Let's Should have you need it. Uh, so, uh, daring plus engineering. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. sure. I have so many 11s that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sounds cool. So that's, 14. My electro, that's my electroplasma power system applies when I'm helping. Let's do that. 14 slash three. You're rolling one die. Uh, yes. It's an 11. So that's a one success. So there's one success towards that total. Okay. okay. And, and some I'm going to, I'm going to take one from the momentum pool. Okay. And I don't think any of my focuses apply. I think we had previously established helm operations is not really uh, for shuttles. For shuttles, no. Um, so that is just 14. Okay. And an extra die. And I will come back to untapped potential if I roll a success, uh, which I do. Two successes. Two successes. So. I, you will go through this halo of flame, wreath of flame, uh, uh, moving along, getting the shuttle in. Uh, but I think part of the problem is like, where are you going to land that's accessible? The way that these ships are connected to each other is is a problem. And I think that you do have to land like the uh, at where the cargo bay is for the merchant ship. I think it's the most accessible place in you know uh and safest one and uh you will land uh, uh with with a secure lock so that you can can drop into the ship which i think that's uh, that's that solely and ward getting that set and as soon as you hit you get that lock vate what do we see you doing uh, i'm just going to roll that um uh extra die just oh, yeah. to uh see if you oh two okay i was about to say see if you had any extra threat to play with on that but that is two free momentum so look at that nice. um i steady myself for a second okay. uh, and i would like to uh see if i can pick up anybody's emotions from outside in the cargo hole hold as i stand with my finger on the door like just to hold up one hand you know stop Phaser, uh, in my belt, and then. Uh, let, let's just tell you, like I think you can tell that there's there's a firefight going on on the other side of this. Uh, I I think uh, you know, like flashes, phaser noises, you know, like a the feeling of a scream coming through, um, and then uh, uh, we're walking into something heavy, crew. Uh, phasers, phasers ready, set to stun. Uh. And um, you know, be ready for uh, loss of atmosphere. Um, press the button for the door. You know, like coming down. All right. Uh, this is you drop down. You will see that there are uh, you know a number of well, clearly civilian crew members from the the the, uh, the Algol. Uh, 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 you know, splayed out. Uh, you will see a uh, a big burly you know, cat person who's holding their arm, uh, uh, bleeding, who's kind of leaned against the wall. And you see the captain, you know, popping up from behind, you know, a crate, because of course it's a room of crates, uh, uh, firing it off. And you will see uh, a trio of Romulans firing Romulan disruptors, uh, uh, trying to take them them down when when you pop the hatch open. Uh, the blast has got to bounce off the outside of the, sh the shuttle, right? Like, yeah. Even like uh i'll um i think i do this the classic star trek drop to one knee and shoot providing covering fire as the rest uh you know like uh 
I'm going to order uh, Lee. Help them. You know, I'm going to point to the Kazinti. Get them to the shuttle, uh, and I'm going to lay down covering fire. All right. Um, I I've been quietly fleshing out a dear Lee as a secondary character. If that's okay. All right. Absolutely. I, I was really hoping you would do that, Alan. <laughs> Uh, so let's do Vates roll first, uh, which would be a combination of of spending sort of success to co provide covering fire or you know doing damage. Uh, mm -hmm. Phaser fire is daring plus security. Mm -hmm. uh, difficulty is one for the close quarters here. Okay, uh, and I have the ability to fire at will. Uh, when I make a main momentum attack, I can use a swift attack. So I'll need to spend momentum after making a ranged attack first. To do that. Yes. But it was difficulty two, did you say? Uh, difficulty one. Difficulty one. Uh, yeah, I'll just take my chances then. Oof, that's one success and a complication. One success and a complication. Are you more interested in providing the cover fire or are you more interested in like trying to take out one of these Romulans? Uh, I think definitely the covering fire. Okay. So you're providing the covering fire. Uh, uh, but I think there is that moment where you jump from like box to box to, to, to swap cover. Uh, and there's the hit uh that just clips you and the just one of the disruptors hits your phaser and knocks it away so that feels like a complication uh oh. adira adira lee let me come to you you're trying to get this huge wounded zinti uh, uh up out of here uh uh you know though you have uh a uh, uh an automatic success from the covering fire but i think we're starting like this is this is now it's still a difficulty too um, I, I think that I'm just going to, because I've deliberately chosen medicine as as three for Adira Lee, because it seems to me that Star Trek's loss of security teams over the years has led to a change in practice, which means they do actually equip them with a reasonable degree of field medicine these days. Okay. So I think I'm going to play doctor and okay. and use the universal translator to, 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 to shout at this Zinti. If okay. you don't come with me now, you might lose that arm. All right, let's have you make that roll. So I'm thinking presence and medicine. That feels good. That's 13. Um, uh, I'm not, uh, I I mean, I, I chose as focus is hand phaser, field medicine and charming. Let's do field medicine. That feels right to me. Okay, so that would be 13-3 uh, then. Yes. With two dice. So, uh, da, 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 da. oh, sorry, different numbers, aren't they? I'll just have to roll the dice, won't I? Sure. Uh, 17 and 8. So, 17 one and success. Eight. So, one success. So, I think that uh, you can get him up uh, uh, and uh, moving, but uh, I think that you take a hit. So... Hang on. Let me get the dice set. There we go. Uh, so you're going to take uh, three points of stress as you are hit by Romulan disruptor fire. Sulil, what are you doing? Uh, Sulil is uh, seeing that his comrades are either disarmed or, or being shot at. Uh, he stands up. He doesn't fire his his uh, his phaser, and he shouts at the Romulan. Can we, because I think we can communicate with the Romulans. We have a show. absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. I shout at them. Uh, we are not here to uh, to attack you. Uh, if you if you stop firing, we can all. We can pull you out from this mess we you all found yourself in. We can go our go our separate ways according to the, to the treaty. There is no reason to to start anything. We, we would have to explain at the commands. So uh, so so please stop doing what is what you're doing and and to, and, and 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 we'll help you resolve this the situation. All right. Operate. I, Don't shoot. I think this is a tough thing to do in the middle of a firefight 
uh, circumstances are kind of against you. Uh, I think you can, let's say difficulty three, that feels right to me. It's a, it's a tough thing, uh, uh, to, to get them to at least stop and listen to you here. Uh, sure. Uh, got some momentum in the pool. Yeah, probably not enough, but uh, yes, uh, I'm tr I'm trying to pick attributes and discipline. And I also think it will be Don't forget, I will, I'll remind you of this. You have determination. You can spend determination after a roll to re-roll whatever you want. You can spend it before a roll to automatically add an extra die that gives you a one, which would be a critical success. Now, mind you, you're only going to get one determination usually per mission. So it's not going to reset anytime soon. But there are ways to get it. I'm just not very Yes, good you have to, to challenge one of your values, have one of your, your values work against you. Uh, can you... Uh, so I want to do... A free, uh, oh, I would think... So I want to use that determination because I have a value. I think you also have to like... If the name of value. value, yeah, yes. So, so, so I have the value fast ships and strange new worlds. I mean, I th this is a strange place, and we should probably cooperate and not shoot at each other. Okay. So, so I will take a one, uh, a one on a yeah, die. So we've already got we got two successes, and then you're going to roll with presence and security. Uh, I thought this would be a command because I have a talent that allows me to I have a doctor's order when you curse someone into taking or refraining from a specific Perfect. course of action yeah. you may use a medical discipline instead of command so presence of medicine presence medicine uh I need a one success I think I should get it hopefully it'll be interesting uh oh, oh I think I'm one short no it's a 13 exactly 13 exactly wait uh, no i lied no i have a 12 I have a That's 12 uh, but what i also wanted to do because i also think i'm not sure if it's possible so there's an a, a note here if the character has a value which would negatively impact the current task they may take one complication to gain one determination and i would like to also call on the same one well that that what that means is rather than rolling you don't get a success. You get oh. a complication. That's oh. like taking a fail, a failure. Okay. To get a determination okay, thank back. You. Yeah. Yeah. Man, uh, it's, so it's a fail. So, how committed are you to the bit? How how committed are you to like exposing yourself to convince them? I think I'm standing there and 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 I am like free to shoot at. Then uh, I think that they're going to listen to you, but you are going to take a Romulan disruptor hit. Oh, look at you only taking two points of damage. Uh, one of them clips you uh, there. And then you'll see one of the Romulans like uh, raise their hand and go and and say, tell us what is going on here, Federation dogs. What have you done to us? Uh, yeah, I like I like hold it, hold it, hold the arm. You are in what we call a Klingon grapple with another two ships. It is caused, and then it is caused by. Uh, wait, I need to go to the, the to the techno bubble tab. It's caused by uh, irregular uh, contamination of a subspace continuum uh, that's that's happening in in the in the system. As of why it happened, we don't know. Which I kind of lie because we expect some weapon detonations. I'm not sure if I know about it, but uh, and we are here to help you. Ward, what are you doing during this? See that um, that Sulil has kind of talked these these three Romulans down. Yeah, I will help Adira get the big cat man into the shuttle. Okay, uh, especially given that she's just been shot. So yeah. Uh, so we'll assume that that you can get the the Zinti up into there. Uh, uh, Captain Pin kind of uh, stands up, and the Romulans say. 
Most of our crew is dead. There was some kind of field that opened up when the ships merged. We've lost external sensors and comms. They, and they kind of stop and they go, they fell out of the world. They fell into subspace. There are just a few of us left. Can you get us out of here? Sully looks at 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 Vade, the most senior officer over here, or like or, or, or like refrains the answering to 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 Vade, who is far more experienced in this. Yeah, Vade's uh, like got a knife, you know, kind of like his blade, just sort of uh, standing ready, and uh, he's going to lower it down and say, uh, "They fell into subspace." Uh, we could then... hear their screams as they fell. There's a chance we might still be able to save them if you put the disruptors down. No, you don't understand. They fell into the vacuum of subspace. But they do put their disruptors down. Well, we're all in this together now. Have you seen any Starfleet other than us? We saw... We saw bits of Starfleet corridor... But we didn't head that way since we knew that that they caused all of this. I think Lee looks at Vate as if to say, what? And Vate looks, has that sort of like, you know, stress moment of like, bit of, bit of pill to swallow uh, and looks at the Romulan and say, We should probably get off this ship quickly, the Romulan says. Well... What about any of the survivors on board? Um, we, we can. I, we can... I, I, I think that with the Romulans and the Algoth crew, we're about full. We may we come back again. Can you get transporters to work? Uh, Salil, grab the pattern enhancers. Uh, Let's set up here in the cargo bay. Yes, yes, Lieutenant, of course. And I will just go back and start bringing this transport enhancers and setting them up. And Salil has already done the action to give you that transporter lock with the forward sensors, plus the work that uh, uh, our uh, engineer has done. So those things are set. So if you set up these uh, pattern enhancers there, uh, I think you can, if you wish, uh, get these Romulans and uh, uh, Captain Pin over. Um, the last Romulan, though, will turn to you, Lieutenant Vate, and will say, we don't have much time. The engines on the Varak are in very bad shape. That warp core is going to go up soon. Well, don't worry, you won't be here when they do. Uh, Kintsugi, <laughs> five to be uh, You know, uh, and I will uh, say to uh, Letal, uh, then the commander recommend you move the Kintsugi back to a safe distance. The, Rom the uh, Romulan ship's warp core is about to blow. Uh, the away team and I are going to go into the Carthage and search for survivors. You understand, Lieutenant that 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 if we if we extend the distance, then we will move beyond transporter range and may well lose the lock we have. We've got the shuttle, sir. It's better than just the, than the Kintsugi team. Thank you for your advice, Lieutenant. Okay, guys. We've got a crew to save. Let's We've go. got a fleet to save. That's what I'm going to say. And, and I think Lee leans in as you set off down these corridors to Vate and says, just 
just unpack that thing about the Federation caused this? Well, I don't think it's that simple, Lee. There's a reason a Romulan ship was out here. And I reckon, I think that the reason was the Carthage. But the Carthage... I'm, I'm probing here for how much bait is going to spill. Yeah, uh, and I, I think he's uh, going to he's going to say, let's just say the Carthage is on special maneuvers, using a very special kind of subspace weaponry. I think. And I mean, that's what the Romulans say about everything, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, but with the, with the, with Wolf Three Five Nine. I think Starfleet's doing everything it can to give us a better, better hand in the future. And the Romulans, they're going to want whatever that hand is. So I imagine we're going to have a montage of you going through the ship. So I'd like to do the classic, we're going to do the classic like journey montage mm -hmm. here, but with, with moving through. So uh, I'm going to have you set the first thing uh uh, Adira, uh, like as you move through this, you know, fallen down firefly ship, uh, uh, and you know, hitting a phase space to kind of move into a portion of maybe the Fed, and then it kind of goes back and stuff. Like, what is the first like challenge? Uh, is it a physical one? Is it a computer unlock one? Is it is it something else? What is the first like obstacle for your travel? I think it is um, a security one because I think that or a uh, related to the Carthage's special mission, which means that they have locked down all the corridors leading to the other ships. Absolutely. Uh, and Ensign Ward, how do you use your skills to overcome this? And again, this isn't a rolled thing. We're just montaging here. Um, well, I did pick a focus of starship recognition from being a Starfleet brat. And I don't know, maybe there's a little edge of news in this, having been through every uh, nook and cranny of this rather old model uh, Starfleet vessel. Oh yeah, this is a classic. You 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 find a, a secondary, you know, uh, smaller uh, uh, Jeffrey's vent and kind of slide down to another level and then make your way further along. And Astrid, what's the next like obstacle that you face in here? Um, I think there is some kind of um, shield array, maybe some malfunctioning security uh, shields that were raised you know, with, with some mishap on the bridge or something. So, you know, a, a block on the corridor or into the rooms we need to get or whatever. And how do you overcome that fate? Uh, the shields? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, what we're actually in is a, um, it's a, a combination of uh, Romulan shields and Federation shields in a sort of like section where they overlap with each other, right? And there's kind of like the, the two beams of light like in between and uh, we're staring at it and the, the Federation panel, control panel is behind the Romulan like shield and they're sh and I'm like... And I pull out, uh, I, I put out a hand, grab Adira's uh, phaser off her and I just carefully shoot a, a conduit that's running overhead and the Romulan shield flickers fails yeah move through that what's the next like physical challenge or danger or trap that you hit um i think the next trap that we hit is um we have to transverse a uh a shut down uh turbo lift uh shoot you know like climbing through the um i think maybe like Climbing upside down due to the, some gravitational yeah. arc of the suit, yeah. And and so, little, how do you help get past this whole like turbo turbo lift shoot uh, uh, issue? What do you do? Uh, I think uh, I think I open a panel on the on the on the wall of this uh, elevator, and I uh, manipulate with the gravity. 
so that it's not like completely off, but 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 like a half or or, or even less than a half. So it's like relatively easy for us to to climb this uh, this uh, this elevator. Perfect. Uh, and then what is what is a what is another obstacle trap difficulty that you have to overcome as you're moving through here? Mm. Trying to think about it. Uh... Uh, uh, I I think uh, I think we come up to uh, I think we are cornered by someone shooting at us from the from the far end of the corridor, uh, and and we have to like tow them down or like, yeah, there is someone shooting at us from the other end of the corridor. Uh, 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 dear Ali, how do you handle that? Hey, schmuck, stop shooting at the rescuers. Uh, uh, and, and I think you're 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 shouting that out. Uh, and the uh, the uh, set, you know, the the sound of the the phaser uh, stops there, and uh, this figure kind of staggers out, uh, bloodied, burnt, you know, federation uniform askew and he just he he looks at you and he comes stumbling forward he goes they they got the captain they got the captain uh, and 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 all the weapons what are they gonna do i don't understand how is, is what is and he's kind of like babbling at this point <laughs> And you'll, and as you do that, you will see a figure step out from the hallway where this person was just at, clearly a person firing, and uh, you will hear, I am detritus of Borg. You will be assimilated. And that is where we are taking up next time. <laughs> delightful all right uh i would like to do a quick uh stars and wishes as we end on a oh there's the the musical stinger dun 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 that we hear it there uh yeah so a quick stars and wishes uh for our our second part of this adventure uh let's start with alan um, I start at you for forcing Letal to finally take some of the responsibility that he keeps thinking and saying that he should have, um, and facing him with the uh, with the challenge of of command, um, uh, and and I think to uh, wait for playing the kind of uh, you don't have to ask me I'm already in the shuttle bay, um, uh, Pavel a great introduction for our, our Trill science officer. Uh, you hit the ground running there. That was really good. And, and Astrid, I, uh, Donna for Astrid, I think it is that kind of, um, that first scene where you get, you know, I ensure that you turn up at the command team meeting and you think you're there because you're in trouble. Uh, it's just delightful. It's, uh, I think there's, this, has got, this has got miles to run. Um, so all of that. And also I think, Lowell, just the way you montaged us through that, uh, journey. Um, uh, this this is a much better game when you run it. Uh, anything wishes wise for next time? Um, I think some kind of moral quandary. Um, that do we do we um, do we actively try to 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 retrieve the Carthage weapon, or do we allow? It to be destroyed, or if the warp core doesn't go up, do we actively destroy it? I think there's some kind of moral question here that that we're all wrestling with. I like it. Uh, Astrid. Um, yeah, it was a, uh, I guess, a rip roaring session of varying 
threats and, and challenges. So I enjoyed that. Um, and a bit of a change from uh, Helm Judy uh, towards the end. Um, and yeah, I think everyone jumped in, uh, showcased their talents. Um, and uh, yeah, as usual, good to see some of our supporting cast get a, a moment yeah. to shine. And yeah, uh, great to see Pavel jump aboard with our um, our, our new science officer. We'll, we'll see how that works out. Um, yeah, and as Alan said, um, great work again, Lowell, on, um, I don't know, this rapid fire spotlight management. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Uh, anything wishes wise? Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe aligning closely with Alan's, you know, what price secrecy, you know, uh, is maybe how uh, another flip side of that moral challenge. Absolutely. Uh, Vate. Um, but you know, a big one is that you are delivering on the wishes every time though. I feel like I say something at the end of a session and then we end up getting it like for the next one, like I asked for a, a search and rescue mission that was a space-based or a space-based thing. Uh, and you delivered a cool anomaly as well. You know, um, all of my favorite Star Trek things. Uh, now we just need to have the, uh, the silly bottle episode that I don't really like, but I watch anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I thought it was a great session. Um, I'm, I love that Alan did jump into the quick character. Like I was hoping, um, you know, I was also like, I know that like RPGs already have a range of protagonists, right? But uh, so there's already like a cast of people. But I do think Star Trek really benefits from having those um, drop in, drop out characters, even if they're not full quick characters. They're just NPCs who are with you, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, you need people in to be put in jeopardy for your crew to actually to rescue and do things around, right? Um, I love that the science officer did sciencey things. I love that everyone managed to do a lot of ship based things. Um, I actually quite enjoyed the ship stuff. I love that the science like helped us overcome and shape it in that typical Star Trek fashion of like here is a problem and here is a edge case solution for that problem that we just said was impossible five seconds ago. Um, it's perfect. Uh, I also love that the science officer's approach to Romulans fighting was to try and speak to them. Uh, <laughs> weapons down, you know, and it worked after a fashion. But yeah, um, my wishes, uh, I guess would be maybe like pushing some stress on us okay you know um i do like the you know when we get hit by weapons fire i imagine it kind of like as the big explosion that lands right next to us right like the partial burns that kind of stuff because like weapons are usually pretty big in uh, star trek right mm -hmm. or like stuff. but um i know i've got a lot of stress to play with compared to other characters but you know it, it feels as though uh you know I don't. I wouldn't mind seeing those stakes. Though. That's right. my quick character. I, I, I definitely think uh, next time, uh, you know, the, the, in those vessels, that that moving from section to section is going to be like start to be a a question of 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 taking stress for some mm -hmm. of those those movements through. I think that's yeah, a good like point. That. Yeah, like ablative kind of like uh, tracking you down as you go through those things. I like yeah. that. Um, but my other wish would be uh, Ward and Lee. Some of that relationship to see before because um i think we've seen the first time that i think vates like the leader of the mission you know here mm -hmm. uh, i've brought along uh, my security ensign who's you know my direct underling compared to usually but i would love to see uh ward and her peer and her roomie um you know perhaps when one of them's in peril or something the other one that kind of thing oh i think that's great uh and then uh, Pavel, I do want to give, by the way, give full credit to Pavel when he made up his character. He wrote to me and said, hey, I'd like a uh, a mission where there's like uh, a secret illegal weaponry. Uh, and so I took that and and ran with the wishes that you gave me last week to put this whole thing together. So uh, full credit to Pavel for the suggestion. Uh, stars, wishes, Pavel? Uh, uh yes stars to everyone for making it for making this this short visit feel like an episode of a star trek with like i think everything was like checked off the uh the the, the lock at the beginning the holodeck scene uh the permission to speak 
like e like everything from the Star Trek episode was checked off, and I really felt the uh, the the mood and the and the feel of it. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I had I had I had fun. Uh, I I was really unexpected. Uh, uh, also a big start to for for Will for this like holodeck because yes, I was thinking like where will I place my character? How am I like fixing this this science? And and he just in in holodeck fighting with the Klingon was it the Klingon the 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 boomerang the yeah? bat laugh yeah the bat laugh yeah absolutely absolutely amazing uh yes starts to everyone i had a lot of fun uh, uh yes i did i did send some inspiration to to lowell because i always like tough choices and other stuff uh, i did get I... to do science stuff but also some engineering so i'm really happy yeah nice set of talents for that it worked really well uh anything wishes wise for tomorrow uh, for next time uh I think uh, I think I would I would love I'm not sure definitely there is no there's not a working holodeck on this ship but maybe we'll we'll have time for a for a scene in some holodeck because I would like to see at least one more scene in, in a holodeck. Okay, absolutely. I mean, if we have to cross the malfunctioning holodeck, I'm up for that. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, we can make that. Uh, I I have that in my complication pack pack now. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. I Thank just you. check oh. whose who's side you're on, Will. <laughs> uh, momentum is at four for you. Threat pool is at two for me. Certainly, I've got so little threat that it's more than more than just, just you just hand me some threat back. Just keep that in mind. Uh, maybe, maybe we're in a hollow deck right now. Maybe the board is <laughs> okay. really there. You know? <laughs> uh, I'm going to stop the recording.